The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine has officially confirmed the destruction of a Su-30SM worth approximately $50 million in the Black Sea. A dive into the depths, reconnaissance aircraft in the Black Sea destroyed a Russian aircraft, the department's press service reported on September 12. During an operation in the Black Sea, soldiers of the Special Forces Unit of the Main Intelligence Directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine destroyed a Russian Su-30SM combat aircraft with a hit from a manpads. The fighter that fell into the sea belonged to the 43rd Separate Naval Aviation Regiment of the Russian Aerospace Forces, which is based at the airfield of the city of Saki in the temporarily occupied Crimea. The cost of such an aircraft is approximately $50 million, the statement said. The occupiers lost contact with their combat aircraft on September 11 at about 5 o'clock. Approximately three hours later, the Russians began a search and rescue operation involving an N-26 aircraft, as well as Mi-8 and Ka-27 helicopters. At lunchtime, the hijackers reported to the command about the discovery of a characteristic stain of aviation fuel in the sea, 70 kilometers northwest of Cape Tarkhankat, and soon they saw the wreckage of the destroyed Su-30SM. This plane was one of the ones that fired Ukraine in missile. In Noyabrsk district of Russia, two schoolchildren burned a helicopter. They were promised 5 million rubles for this. According to Baza, on the night of September 11, two boys aged 13 and 14 made their way onto the helipad at the Noyabrsk airport, after which they poured flammable liquid on the Mi-8 helicopter parked there and set it on fire. The boys fled the scene of the crime, but they were detained less than an hour later. The fact is that the schoolchildren set the helicopter on fire with cigarettes. After they poured the liquid on the helicopter, the boys decided to smoke and then threw a cigarette into the helicopter. There was no fire. Then one of the boys lit a second cigarette and then stuck it into the liquid. At that moment, an explosion occurred. As a result, the boys' faces were badly burned, so after running a little away from the airport, the schoolchildren had to call an ambulance. Medics took the arsonists to the hospital. The helicopter burned almost completely, only its tail remained. During a conversation with law enforcement officers, the schoolchildren said that they were promised 5 million rubles for their work. The boys also admitted that several days ago they set fire to a cell phone tower. For this, they received 30,000 rubles. On September 10 the Russian armed forces had launched a counteroffensive in the Kursk region. Servicemen from one of the units in the border region told that airborne and marine units had driven the Ukrainian armed forces out of four settlements, Gordievka, Bayakovo, Nezipnoi, and Viktorovka. The battles for neighboring villages continue, the enemy is retreating, as soon as we have confident control, we will report on other villages, said the RTVI source. The MASH Telegram channel was one of the first to report on the Russian Armed Forces offensive in the Kursk region. According to the channel, the Russian military drove the Ukrainian Armed Forces out of the village of Gordievka in an hour and a half, and also began counterattacks in the areas of Apanasovka and Martinovka. In total, 10-plus km of territory were liberated in 24 hours, MASH claims. Military expert Mikhail Zvinchuk writes that the Russian armed forces launched a counterattack on one of the sections of the front, liberating two settlements in less than a day and starting battles in at least two more. Some of the Ukrainian armed forces units in the area are under threat of encirclement, while the advanced groups of Russian troops continue their offensive both to the south and to the east, Mikhail Zvinchuk reports. Zvinchuk reports that Russian troops are conducting a counteroffensive on the Gordivkas Nagast line. To the north of the latter, Russian paratroopers have made significant progress, 
taking control of the approaches to the village and entering its territory, the expert points out. War correspondent Yuri Kotnok reported that, according to preliminary data, the Russian armed forces have liberated Snagist. During the offensive at Snagist, dozens of Ukrainian soldiers were killed, some surrendered, the telegram channel Operation Z war correspondents of the Russian Spring reports. Deputy head of the main military political department of the Ministry of Defense and commander of the Chechen Special Forces, Akhmet Apti Aladinov announced very large losses of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region. The Ukrainian military personnel stationed in Snagist were unable to withstand the onslaught and retreated in the direction of Lubomovka and then in the direction of Zeleny Shlyak, the Ingpra Zvedka telegram channel claims. Massive artillery and airstrikes were carried out, helicopters carried out a number of successful raids. At the moment, massive artillery preparation is ongoing, the Post says. According to Mikhail Zvinchuk, Ukrainian troops were driven out of some positions in Aponisivka and its environs, as well as in the area of the village of October 10. As Zvinchuk writes, as a result of Russian counterattacks, the Ukrainian armed forces were under threat of encirclement in the area of the village of Krasnuktyabrsky. According to the Telegram channel, Operation Z, war correspondents of the Russian Spring, Ukrainian troops were driven out of almost a dozen settlements. Cleansing and consolidation continues in all settlements, the publication says. In particular, the Ukrainian armed forces were driven out of Komarovka, Sheptakovka and Vishnevka, claims Operation Z. In addition, our forces are attacking near Borky, Pogrebki and Martinovka, the Telegram Channel reports.